Hi there. So today uh, we'll be dealing with the important, if not all the aspects of the human thigh. The thigh is the region between the hip joint and the knee joint. So it has got different compartments. It has got an anterior compartment, a medial compartment, and a posterior compartment. Now in the anterior compartment of the thigh, we study two important uh, things. One is a triangular depression that is called the femoral triangle, which is present in the upper one third of the front of thigh and adductor canal, which is present in the middle one third medial part of front of thigh. So first let us see the uh, femoral triangle, which is a triangular depression present on the front of thigh in the upper one third. So this triangular depression is bounded by uh, a muscle, which is known as the sartorius muscle. So you can see the sartorius muscle in the diagram and the medial border of the sartorius muscle is forming one of the boundaries. The inguinal ligament shown in green here is forming the base of the triangle. But the lateral boundary is formed by the medial border of the adductor longus and where the lateral and medial boundaries meet that point is called the apex of the triangle. Now students the important thing to understand here is that on one side we have the sartorius muscle. Suppose my hand is representing the sartorius muscle. So the medial border of sartorius is there. On the other side is that my other hand it is representing the adductor longus. Now this adductor longus is twisted like this so that its medial border is lying at the same level as the lateral border of sartorius and the triangular depression is called the femoral triangle. So that is why you know students often wonder how on one side of this triangle the boundary is formed by the medial border of sartorius while on the other side it is not the lateral border of adductor longus but the medial border of adductor longus. That is because the adductor longus is twisted so that most of it forms the floor of the femoral triangle while its medial border lies at the same level as the medial border of sartorius. So it forms the boundary of the triangle. So this is a triangle having a base which is uh, represented by the inguinal ligament shown in green here. It has got an apex where the lateral and medial boundaries meet. So what are the contents of the triangle? You've got this blue structure here, you've got the red structure here and the yellow structure here. So the uh, we start with the red structure that is the femoral artery. Now this femoral artery, it gives off a branch, superficial branches and deep branches. So you can see some of the superficial branches here. So the femoral nerve divides into anterior and posterior divisions. So uh, this nerve, you know, it, uh, the anterior division supplies the sartorius muscle and then it gives two cutaneous branches, intermediate and medial cutaneous nerve of thigh, while the posterior division gives just one cutaneous branch and it supplies the muscles of the front of the thigh. Other muscles other than the sartorius, that is the three vasti, the articularis, genu and the rectus femoris. So the nerve to rectus femoris supplies the hip joint while the nerve to the vasti they supply the knee joint so you know that is why pain in the hip joint may be referred to the knee joint then uh, other than the femoral artery femoral vein and femoral nerve what all structures we see here we see the uh, floor of the femoral triangle being formed by the iliopsoas and the pectineus muscle and the adductor longus while the roof of the triangle is formed by skin, superficial fascia, and deep fascia. So we also see here the profunda femoris branch arising from femoral artery, dividing into lateral circumflex femoral artery. It also forms the medial circumflex femoral artery. Then other than the femoral artery, femoral vein, femoral nerve, uh, the femoral vein and the femoral artery, they are covered by a sheet, and that sheet is called the femoral sheath and below it uh, communicates with the connective tissue, it continues with the connective tissue of the femoral artery and the femoral vein. Then there are some nerves also seen in this triangle. You can see laterally there is this lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh, then femoral nerve is there. Then uh, once the femoral nerve is above the inguinal ligament, it 
it gives off the nerve to pectineus which lies posterior to the rectus sheath and it supplies the pectineus muscle so all these structures are there and they should be appreciated so this was something about the femoral triangle uh, it has also got the deep inguinal lymph nodes and uh, you need to practice this diagram and uh, this is asked in the examinations so then the femoral sheath i told you the femoral artery and the vein they are covered by a sheath and this sheath the anterior wall of the sheath is formed by fascia transversalis while the posterior wall is formed by fascia iliaca and this femoral sheath you know it has got compartments so medial compartment intermediate compartment and lateral compartment intermediate compartment is the venous compartment containing the femoral vein lateral compartment is the arterial compartment containing the femoral artery and the femoral branch of genitofemoral nerve we are more interested in the medial compartment here which is called the femoral canal and it contains this lymph node lymph node of clocke or rosenmuller a few lymphatics and some areolar tissue so this diagram is more illustrative it is showing the femoral sheath and in the femoral sheath are lying the femoral artery and the femoral vein the medial most compartment is that of called the femoral canal which is bounded by the femoral ring above and it contains the lymph node of clocke or rosenmuller and uh, we are more concerned with the femoral canal because this canal is an area of potential weakness through which femoral hernia can take place and this is more common in females because the femoral vessels the size of femoral vessels is lesser in females and the pelvis is broader in females so there is more chance of uh, protrusion of abdominal contents abnormal protrusion through the femoral canal in females vis-a-vis the males so uh, one can also make out the femoral branch of genitofemoral nerve here it is piercing the sheath and it supplies uh, the skin over the femoral triangle so this femoral canal also is asked in the examinations so where the femoral triangle ent- ends that is the apex of the femoral triangle there in the middle one third of the thigh on the medial aspect deep to the sartorius lies an intermuscular portion which is referred to as the adductor canal this is important because the femoral artery is exposed in different operations here so this hunters or adductor canal has got boundaries the anterior wall is formed by vastus medialis the posterior wall or <coughs> floor is formed by adductor longus and adductor magnus while the roof is formed by a fibrous membrane which is overlapped by the sartorius muscle so this adductor canal has got various structures in it and you can make out the femoral vessels then there is nerve to vastus medialis which supplies the vastus medialis in the upper part two divisions of obturator nerve are there anterior and posterior division of obturator nerve and the posterior branch of the femoral nerve cutaneous branch that is the saphenous nerve is also seen here so if we see here at the apex of the femoral triangle the femoral vein which was lying medial in the femoral triangle to the artery it comes posterior medial to the artery and then it comes and crosses the artery to lie on the lateral side and we can see here the femoral artery is giving muscular branches and it is uh, giving a descending genicular branch to the knee joint and then we can also see the femoral vein here and we can see the saphenous nerve how it is crossing the femoral artery superficially and this saphenous nerve how it is going down we can also see the two divisions of the obturator nerve the anterior division ends by supplying the femoral artery it forms a plexus on the femoral artery while the posterior division you know it goes on to supply the knee joint posterior division of obturator nerve so all these structures need to be appreciated and this diagram also you need to practice then the medial compartment of the thigh now a uh, femoral nerve we say it is formed by the dorsal divisions of anterior primary rami of spinal nerves l2 3 and 4 while the nerve of the medial compartment of the thigh is the obturator nerve 
and this is formed by the ventral divisions of the anterior primary rami of L234. So why obturator nerve is formed by ventral divisions while femoral nerve is formed by dorsal divisions when femoral nerve is the nerve of the anterior compartment that needs to be appreciated and that is due to the fact that the lower limb bud you know it has got rotated during development so due to the rotation whatever was anterior it became medial and because it became medial the root value of the obturator nerve which is the nerve of the medial compartment is we say it is formed by the ventral divisions of the anterior primary rami of L234, while what was posterior became anterior. So we say the femoral nerve has is formed by the dorsal divisions of anterior primary rami of L23 and 4. So this obturator nerve is the nerve of the medial compartment. It is formed in the pelvis and then it passes through the obturator canal. It divides into two anterior and posterior divisions. The anterior division goes on to supply the pectineus muscle. You can make out here in the diagram. It may give a tick to the bravis. So then it supplies the gracilius muscle. And anterior division also gives the tick to the hip joint. Well, the posterior division, it pierces the obturator externus, as you can make out in this diagram. And then if the anterior division is not supplying the adductor bravis, the posterior division will. And the posterior division supplies the adductor magnus. And then it ends by going to the knee joint. So you can see here, it pierces the oblique popliteal ligament and ultimately it supplies the knee joint. So again, this nerve, the anterior division is supplying the hip joint, while the posterior division is supplying the knee joint. So you can see both the femoral and the obturator nerves, they supply the hip and the knee joints. So that is why pain in one, disease in one joint can cause pain in the other joint which can be referred due to the same nerve supplying the two joints. So this anatomical concept should be clear in your mind. So this was about the medial compartment of the thigh. Now we come to the posterior compartment of the thigh. This is the favorite of the examiners and they like to put in a short note on hamstrings. The muscles of the posterior compartment of thigh are called hamstrings and they are semimembranosus, semitendinosus, long head of biceps femoris, and the ischial head of adductor magnus. So here in this diagram, we are seeing the back of the thigh. So on the medial side, you know, there's a tendinous muscle lying superficially called semitendinosus. Deep to it, dotted, you can see, is the semimembranosus, which is a broader muscle. And then on the lateral side, one can make out the long head of biceps, which is arising in common with the semitendinosus muscle. And the long head is joined by the short head, and ultimately they are both inserting. So, you know, this uh, uh, in this diagram, we can make out three hamstring muscles, semitendinosus, semimembranosus, and the long head of biceps femoris. And all these, all these ham hamstrings, you know, they have got common features. The four hamstrings have got common features that they are supplied by the TBL part of uh, branch of sciatic nerve. They're inserting into the one of the bones of the leg they are arising from the ischial tuberosity and they have got a common action. That is, they are extensors, weak extensors of the hip joint and strong flexors of the knee joint. So they help in running. So three are three uh, hamstrings can be appreciated in this diagram. One can also see the sciatic nerve and it is how it is dividing into the common peroneal nerve laterally and the tibial part of the sciatic nerve going vertically downwards. So semimembranosus, semitendinosus, they are inserting in relation to the tibia. Now, uh, the adductor magnus, it is not, it is inserting into the adductor tubercle, but still it is considered a hamstring. So why is that? Uh, that is because the tibial collateral ligament is considered to be a degenerated tendon of this muscle. So you should keep this point of view in mind. So about the fourth hamstring, which you can't see in this figure, let us see it here, the ischial part of adductor magnus. So again, this is the ischial tuberosity, superior lateral area from where the semimembranosus arises, which was the uh, broad, mus broader muscle, which was shown dotted in the previous diagram. Semitendinosus has got common origin with long head of biceps femoris. And in the lower part, you can make out ischial part of adductor magnus. You know, 
This is the hamstring component of adductor magnus, which is a hybrid muscle. And this ischial part of adductor magnus, it is going and going on to the uh, its insertion. And this is the adductor part of adductor magnus. And you can make out the adductor hiatus through which when the femoral artery uh, passes, then we call it the popliteal artery. So there is the opening, tendinous opening in the adductor magnus through which the femoral artery, when it passes, uh, when the femoral artery is in the hunter's canal, and then it passes through this opening, then this same artery is referred to as popliteal artery. So again, we can make out the uh, sciatic nerve here, dividing into tibial and common peroneal nerves. So this was about the three compartments of the thigh. I've not got it gone into detail, but I don't think detail is required also. What you need to do is practice these diagrams, understand the position of these muscles, and uh, uh, form a concept in your mind regarding the structures and the relations. Um, the hamstring muscles, hamstring means back of hip and thigh. And uh, during the ancient times, the soldiers used to slit the tendons at the back of the knee of the opponent so that they won't run away. That was called hamstringing. So hamstring muscles, they're important from an examination point of view because of their common characteristics and their important action. So all the three compartments you need to do, do and you need to realize that they have got a different nerve supply, all the three compartments and uh, the hamstrings are supplied by the tibial part of sciatic nerve while the medial compartment of the thigh is supplied by obturator nerve, while the muscles of the front of the thigh are supplied by the femoral nerve. So with this, uh, I take your leave. That's enough for this session. And uh, the next time we will do the gluteal region. So thank you for your patience.